Director General of the Criminal Investigations Department of the Ghana Police Service, Mameya Tiwa Adodankwa, and six others promoted to rank of commissioner. Now also coming up, Member of Parliament for the Ifutu constituency, Alexander Athenio Markin, wants all 23 staff of the university who were dismissed, suspended or demoted, reinstated. Also tonight, the rainstorm in Kumase in the Ashanti region leaves scores of people displaced. Coming up in international news, thousands of Algerians demand a complete overhaul of the country's political structure. We have details coming up shortly. Do stay with us. In our very first story, we bring you an update from the University of Education, Winneba, where the Member of Parliament for the Ifutu constituency, Alexander Athenu Markin, wants all 23 staff of the university who were dismissed, suspended or demoted, reinstated. And speaking to journalists in Accra, he described the reinstatement of only three UEW lecturers as not enough. Kwache Afren Rama has more in this report. The University of Education, Weneba, was embroiled in confusion over the dismissal, suspension and demotion of some lecturers and workers. Students of the university embarked on a massive protest leading to the destruction of property running into 250,000 Ghana cities. The school was subsequently shut down. After a series of petitions led by UTAG, the governing council of the university recalled three of the SAC lecturers, Professor Ephraim Avia Inso, Dr. Frempon Ketri Duku, and Dr. Imano Osei Sapon. Some 20 others were, however, not recalled. The Futu MP says the reinstatement of only three of the lecturers is not enough. My worry is that we shouldn't uh, give a half-baked uh, solution. We need a complete solution. We need to resolve the matter once and for all. As far as I know, from the meetings that I participated in and the conclusions arrived there too, all those who were uh, sacked as a result of disagreement with the new management in one way or the other were supposed to be reinstated. He wants the Vice Chancellor, Reverend Professor Afo Broni, to personally take up the matter and ensure the other 20 employees are fully restored to their ranks. I'll plead with the Vice Chancellor. I will not, I'm not talking about governing council. The Vice Chancellor is the complainant. All matters that go to the governing council emanate from the Vice Chancellor. Per the enactment, the Vice Chancellor is the complainant or the chief disciplinary officer. So he initiates the move and it gets to governing council. I would want to plead with all stakeholders to work around the clock and ensure that this matter is resolved once and for all. He again rejected suggestions that overturning the sanctions against all the staff would bring indiscipline. Let's be fair. It is not about encouraging impunity. It is not about pushing for law, uh, 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 lawlessness. But we know that people have become victims because of views they've expressed. And on the table, we've reached a consensus that reconciliation should be the key word. The University of Education, Weneba, is expected to reopen on Monday, April 8. We have our eyes on the happenings in that particular institution, but Kaum has returned to Somania in the Yellow Krobo municipality of the Eastern region after two youth groups in the town clashed with the police over frequent power cuts. Uh, two persons sustain injuries and are uh, receiving treatment at the Koforidia Central Hospital. Report by Yvonne Nikwe. Police report indicates that on Wednesday evening,
They had an information that a group of residents had begun protesting from Pong following a power outage. The group headed to the PDS office. The police moved to the Somanya runabout to meet the protesters who had burnt 40 car ties on the Somanya Odumasi road. The police say the group who were welding offensive weapons began throwing them. They called for reinforcement and seized about 21 lorry ties. In the process, some members of the group fled off. A different youth group from Ogom came to the scene to confront protesters and threw stones at the first group for tarnishing the image of Somanya, which degenerated into a clash. The police say efforts to bring peace did not avail. Two of the police officers were hit by stray stones, one on the eye and the other on the left ear. The two protesters were also hit by shots from the police. To one of our headline stories, and a number of senior police officers have been promoted to the rank of commissioners by the police administration. Top on the list is the Director General of Police CID, DCOP Mami Yatiwa Adudankwa, who was promoted to the rank of DCOP on October 27, 2017. Now, COP Mamiya Tiwa Dudankwa joined five other deputy commissioners at the apex rank in the police service. They are Director General of Finance, George Tufour, Director General of Services, Alex Amponsa Esiama, Director General of Police Operations, George Alex Mensa, Eastern Regional Commander Alphonse Du Amampa, and the Northern Regional Police Commander. Timothy Yosa Bonga. The promotions take effect from April 1, 2019. A memo signed by the Inspector General of Police, David Asante Pietu, also elevated three assistant commissioners to the ranks of Deputy Commissioner. They are Francis Abuaje Nyakun, Enes Kwabina Usu, and Felix Ousu Ajiman. The Accra Regional Operations Commander, Chief Superintendent Kwesi Ofori has also been promoted to the rank of Assistant Commissioner along with Faustina Ejewa Kudia and Kofi. Let's stay on this a bit further and get a profile of the CID boss, Mamiya Tiwa Adudankwa. Mamiya Tiwa Adudankwa was recruited into the Ghana Police Service on July 27, 1990 and has risen through the ranks by dint of hard work and her desire to achieve higher academic laurels. When she passed out, she was first posted to the Police Hospital Accounts Session as a constable. After the 18 months probation, she was promoted to the rank of a sergeant in 1992 because she enlisted with a Diploma in Business Studies Accounting option which she obtained at the Kumasi Polytechnic between 1988 and 1990. Having been promoted to sergeant, she enrolled with the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana, in 1995 and passed out the Level 2 examination successfully and was promoted to Chief Inspector. This granted her a direct entry into the police college in October 1998. In May 1999, out of a class of 48, 46 men and two women, she was adjudged the all-round best cadet and best student in humanities, making her the second female to take that award at the time. In recognition of her remarkable accomplishment, a special staff of honour was ordered from the United Kingdom by the then inspector. Now, I, we, we put a spotlight on Mamiya Tiwa Dodonkwa. The reason is that a number of people have raised questions about uh, the period 
of uh, hair promotion or elevation to COP, considering the fact that it's about last two years in 2017 is when she was elevated to the DCOP position. Now, to get clarity on this, and for education purposes as well, DCOP or Paria de Retard is a former police chief and now lectures at the Kofiana International Peacekeeping Training Center. And he joins me on the telephone uh, for some more clarity on this. Good evening to you, uh, DCOP Retard. Good evening, sir. Thank you for your time this evening. Now, take us through the, the processes of uh, rising through the ranks in the Ghana Police Service with respect to uh, promotion. So this time we're talking specifically about uh, COP Mamiya Tiwa, who until today was a DCOP, two years ago was elevated, mm -hmm. and now she has been promoted to the COP position. Is this normal in the police hierarchy? Yeah, just normal. Now, Mami Etu has been a, a deputy commissioner of police for almost three years, and the government of the day has the power and the prerogative to promote her to uh, commissioner of police. When you look at the position that's been holding, commissioner of police is an apt promotion for her. I don't have any difficulty in saying that and congratulating her on her promotion. So under what circumstances, for example, would, would, would such a situation be, be, be normalized um, when you have this uh, kind of timing of the person being promoted earlier than what should be the normal case? Uh, we don't talk about earliness, if I should put it that way, in the promotion of officers of a rank. The government of the day the police council of today can promote her to uh, a commissioner in regard to what she's doing for the government of the day or for the government of Ghana. So when she's promoted to that rank, I don't have anything to say about that. I think she has the right to be promoted, and that's what exactly she's been giving as the commissioner of police. Now, when you look at Mami Atiwa, a very intelligent woman, uh, I trained her at the police college, and she was the best cadet. Uh, I have been dealing with her over and over again. She is up to be giving this back. Fantastic. Now, so clearly, this is not more like an exception to the rule. It is something that, per the credentials and her work, she deserves this elevation, you say? What I'm saying is that, I was promoted at every commission of police after three years of what? But others were also, my mates were promoted at the same time. But she is the woman at the headquarters of the CID, and she is the leader of the place. I know we have deputy commissioners out there, so she must be put in a place that would create an environment of dignity for her as a deputy a commission of police. So if anybody speaks about this, if anybody complains about a promotion, I don't think it is anything to go by. Right on. Thank you for this clarity and also uh, for, for education purposes, putting all of this into perspective. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. This is your return. It's a pleasure. Great. This OP Oparia Doritad is a former police chief and a lecturer at the Kofiana International Peacekeeping Training Center and also the police training uh, college as well. You're watching News 360. Let's now go to the Western Region where the Gender Court in Second D has ordered for a psychiatric examination of 42-year-old Rose Mausi Fiaku, who has been accused of stealing a one-year-old baby at the Takradi Market Circle. Her lover, Lawson Latte, and alleged accomplice, on the other hand, was granted bail in the sum of 10,000 Ghana cities with two sureties to reappear before the court on April 26. During a hearing at the Takradi Circuit Court on March 28, presiding judge, Her Honor Abna Ajin Doku, ordered for a pregnancy test to be conducted on the accused, Rose Mausifiaku, after she pleaded for mercy from the stealing charges because she was pregnant. However, results from the pregnancy test presented to the gender court on Friday, April 5, was negative. In her account, Rose said she realized that her menses had ceased for two months and concluded that she was pregnant. The accused, 
who showed remorse admitted in court that she did not seek medical attention to further confirm her suspicion. When the presiding judge, her honor Abna Ajindoku, inquired from the family whether the accused had any history of mental disorder, the family members in the court suggested that prior to the stealing of the baby, she had begun acting strangely. Abna Ajindoku then proceeded to order for a psychiatric examination of Rose. Emmanuel Kofiatha, lawyer for the second accused, Lawson Lati, was not in court. Loyatha had, at the previous sitting, argued his client was misled by Mousy that she was pregnant and had subsequently given birth. Lawson had been out of the country for some time. Mousy showed up with the baby after intense pressure from Lawson after he came back to Ghana. Lawson has been granted bail in the sum of 10,000 cities with two sureties to reappear before the court on April 26. A 45-year-old man is in the grips of the police for faking as a medical practitioner at Sereso in the Busumchi district of the Ashanti region. According to the police, one of his unsuspecting victims, whom he performed an abortion on, is in critical condition at the Konfonochi Teaching Hospital in Kumasi, a report by Ibrahim Abubakar. Popularly known as abortion doctor, Samuel Boatien is said to have no formal medical training, certificate or license to practice. The suspect allegedly operates from a maternity clinic he inherited from his late stepmother. Deputy Police Public Relations Officer Corporal Prince Dogbache told TV3 the suspect will soon be arranged. The suspect who is currently assisting police investigations was arrested when his illegal operation led to health complications of one of his unsuspecting victims. Preliminary police investigations revealed that the suspect had dug an insanitary hole inside the facility where destroyed uterus and fetus were buried. Corporal Dogbache appealed to the public to refrain attending to quack doctors for their own safety. The general public is advised to promptly report the operations of quack doctors within their neighborhood to the police to safeguard the citizen from being abused unnecessarily. And away from the Ashanti region, President Ekufado says prospects for scaling up economic relations between Ghana and Cuba are considerable. President Ekufado held discussions with Cuban President Miguel Diaz Canel on ways of cooperation for both countries. President Ekufado was confident Ghana and Cuba can forge stronger partnerships which are mutually beneficial. Ghana and Cuba have maintained relations since 1959. Ghana is the first African country to have established diplomatic relations with the government of the Cuban Revolution. Through the Cuban Medical Brigade, hundreds of doctors have been trained and are offering services to Ghana. While some hundreds of Ghanaian students continue to receive scholarships by the Cuban government, On our MTN video report today, Seydou Lari Salifu reports from the Tingoli area in the northern region on the daily struggles for water. This is the source of drinking water for the villages Tingoli and Dasuyili. On the river which is almost dry, the remaining source which is more or less like stagnant water. More than five years now, after the peoples have contributed by themselves to enlarge this river and even created pumps for it, where they could pump when the water rises during the rainy season. Now the pumps are all spoiled. The river is closing up and water doesn't stay there for long. This is mud all over. Yet people are drinking mud. Look at the color of this water. Can you call this water? Look at it. Animals and human beings drinking water together. 
This is the second source of water we're talking about. As you can see, the women are scorching from holes created by themselves near the river. This water comes out. Look at that tiny water there. Check this old lady out. She has been scorching from this water since morning. And yet, she doesn't even have a full jar and it's still empty. Look at it. My name is Larry Salifu and I'm reporting from Tingoli. It's clearly a disturbing, worrying situation. I recall situation we've, we've exposed this in uh, one of our mission stories mm. uh, and when people were doubting whether mm. this really is the case. But you're seeing it again, you know. So we would urge that some swift action be taken to address this. You can also send your video report uh, to WhatsApp number 055-1433-044. We'll be back shortly with some more stories. Hello, good evening and welcome to the business news segment here on News 360. My name is Park Asari. Now, President Akufado has disclosed a biolavicide factory will be established in Tavalugo in the northern region through a joint venture agreement with Cuban firm Labio Farm SA. The president who toured the manufacturing company on his visit to Cuba revealed an agreement will be reached with a company to establish a manufacturing facility in Ghana and sell cocoa liquor. President Kufuado says the cooperation between Ghana and Cuba will be extended to the eradication of malaria in Ghana. According to President Kufuado, a biolavicide factory will be established in Savlugu in the northern region of Ghana. So it should be possible for us to leave here with some kind of chronology, calendar, as to timelines for doing things. When we can sign the bioservices, the technical service agreement, when we have to make sure that the financing in this place and the approvals from the Ghana government, all these are matters that we should get concrete about now. There's been a lot of talk. It's now time for us to move on. I'm very anxious that we should get on with this project for Ghana. In addition, the president indicated work on an agreement for the sale of Ghana's cocoa liquor to the Stella SA chocolate factory in Cuba is underway. President Kufuado says cooperation between Cuba and Ghana on malaria is important to reduce the cost to Ghana. In other news, senior partner at PricewaterhouseCoopers, Vish Ashiagbo, has underscored the need to secure the gains made after the banking sector cleanup. According to him, although profit figures for the banking sector reduced in 2018, the sector remains profitable. Figures from the Bank of Ghana have shown that the profitability of commercial banks in the country declined by almost 10% in 2018. But the central bank says overall, the banking industry remains strong. The profit growth of the banks, which stood at 21.7% as of December 2017, dipped to 12.5% as of December 2018, something that is attributable to the Bank of Ghana's reforms and cleanup of the banking sector. The Chief Executive Officer, Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Yofi Grant, says there is a resolve that the banking sector is stronger and more resilient after the cleanup. The results so far are showing that we have a stronger, more resilient banking sector um, that is preparing itself to fund an economy in transition. And I think that's what's very important for us as a nation, um, that investors see that um, the sector is strong, it is resilient, it has been cleaned up, because if it hadn't cleaned up, it, would have come to, uh, it, it might have come to even worse than it was before. Total assets of the banks moved up from a total of 93.6 billion CDs in 2017 to 107.3 billion CDs in 2018, thus a growth rate of 14.7% within a year. Acre Energy has committed an amount of $4.5 million as support for the Accelerated Oil and Gas Capacity Building Program, announcing the support in Accra, country manager of the Norwegian oil and gas giant, Jan Helge, uh, observed the AOGC program will help reduce dependence on expatriates in the Ghanaian oil and gas sector. The Accelerated Oil and Gas Capacity Building Program, which was launched in November 2017, is to bring together all oil and gas capacity building initiatives by government under one umbrella. 
The AOGC program focuses on enhancing the capacity of Ghanaians to work in the oil and gas sector. Announcing the support package, the country manager of Aka Energy, Jean Skogen, explained training was a major focus for the $4.5 million support. We want to get a lot out of our $4.5 million contribution. And we are confident that this will happen through the project framework and the good cooperation that we have already established between the Petroleum Commission and Acker Energy. Acker ASA has recently initiated plans to establish a separate investment company, Acker Ghana Industrial Corporation. This is to support local industry through investments, transfer of technology, know-how and skills. Petroleum Commission of Ghana is mandated to coordinate and implement the Accelerated Oil and Gas Capacity Building Program. Acting CEO of the Commission, Egbert Fable Jr., noted the program will last for five years and aims to train individuals in various vocational and technical areas. I will put out advertisements in the newspapers and ask qualified Ghanaians to apply. We may not be able to take all at a time, but we'll use various selection criteria to you know, select. This is a program for all Ghanaians. We are going to go to the 16 regions and work with stakeholders, the chiefs, community leaders, educational institutions to select. Nobody will be left behind in this exercise, no. The wife of the vice president, Hajia Samira Baumia, assured government's commitment in sustainability and funding of the accelerated oil and gas capacity building program. Aka Energy Ghana Limited, a subsidiary of Norwegian-based oil exploration and production firm, Aka AS, is the operator of the Deep Water Tunnel Cape Three Point Block. It has 50% participating interest in the license and aims at becoming the offshore oil and gas operator of choice in Ghana. Well, that's all for the business report on News 360. Thanks very much for your time. For more business stories, you can log on to our website, 3news.com. Hello again, it's now time for Mission, and Mission is brought to you by Star Ghana with funding from Danida, UK Aid, and the EU. Let's go to the central region where the Cape Coast Metropolitan Assembly is ensuring disbursement of the 3% common fund for persons with disability is done in a transparent manner. Bright Nana Amfo reports leadership of disability organizations have been made part of the Fund Management Committee. This ensures PWDs get what they need. They are the less fortunate. Many need support to live decent lives. The 3% common fund is a vital piece of support for such persons. The Cape Coast Metropolitan Assembly pays particular attention to persons with disability. Transparency is the key thing here in the disbursement of the 3% common fund for persons with disability. Here at the Cape Coast Metro Assembly, the Fund Management Committee has been expanded and this is to include leadership of persons with disability. Now these persons are able to tell the committee the needs of persons with disability. In situations where some of them are asking for what they do not need, the leadership is able to stop them. This is to ensure that their needs are addressed. Because of the premium we are tied to the disability issues, we have this subcommittee and uh, it, it is for the, it champions the cause of persons with disability solely. It looks at their well-being, where a, 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 a children with disability, it, it looks at their education, where a, 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 their skill training, where they need, this, uh, they, uh, where they need some support, a life support. We also look at all those things. This has brought improvement in handling issues of persons with disability. Management of funds for persons with disability has always attracted attention. The Cape Coast Assembly has found a way of ensuring transparency. In order to be very transparent, we want all their representatives to be around so that they see how much of the amount came. And we, in fact, it is the fund we will turn down to come out with these, uh, these percentages. 
So they, they should be present also to see that, in fact, we got 10 cities and 20% of 10 cities is so much and it is going to special needs. Leadership of disability organizations plays a key role in disbursement. The Cape Coast Metropolitan Assembly has about 750 persons with disability. There are still some who are not registered with the Assembly. Many are engaged in viable ventures, but funding is a challenge. The needs are many and very diversified. You meet one person who needs medical attention, who needs an assistive device, and who needs something to, to, to live on. And the, the amount of money that is released, no, it has, it has been enhanced. But still, like the proverbial Oliver, Oliver Twist, it cannot meet their needs. The Common Fund is therefore a vital tool for those engaged in small businesses. Ensuring transparency in managing the funds is key, and funding is given to ensure PWD's welfare. We do so many different things, even at the Aboom Special Needs School, where we have those with intellectual disabilities. We, we supported um, the construction, though the Australian High Commission did the major work, the construction of a physiotherapy center for the children with cerebral palsy and the rest. So we are not limited to just distributing funds. We've been supporting the Ghana Education Service, the Metro's office, to do screening. The expansion of the Fund Management Committee to include leadership of disability organizations is a tool that PWDs in the Cape Coast Metropolitan Assembly are using to improve their lives and live decent lives. Cape Coast, we have one unique situation that the financial secretary of the Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations in Cape Coast happens to be an accountant by profession. So we also lobbied and had him as a signatory to the District Assembly Common Fund meant for persons with disabilities. So in the first place in Cape Coast, we don't have anything like the Cape Coast Metro Assembly has gone to borrow from our um, funds because we are a signatory to the check. So without our signature, no redrawal can take place. Nothing about us without us. That is the catchphrase. Bright Nananfo, TV3, Cape Coast. And that's it for Mission. Mission is brought to you by Star Ghana with funding from Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you, Portia, with missions. And to the Ashanti region, where a rainstorm in Kumasi in the Ashanti region has caused havoc and left scores of people displaced. Hundreds of residents and students have been rendered homeless, uh, while dozens of buildings have been destroyed. Here's a report by Benjamin Adu. One person has been injured and is seeking medical attention after a billboard fell on a car he was driving during a rainstorm. He was trapped in the car for hours. The storm affected the Ashantiman Senior High School at Imrum in Kumasi severely. The roofing of one of the girls' dormitory was ripped off, displacing about 400 students. Headmaster of the school, Nathaniel and Chi Asamwa called on the students to be calm. Which is also housing some of you girls. Now, we want all of you to relax. Already, you, some of you have sent messages to your parents. And uh, they got alarmed. Adding to the false reportage that also went on air. That uh, the school is, uh, is in flames. There is fire outbreak here. And that uh, we have about 32 of our girls who have collapsed uh, at, the, at the various hospitals. Now, the situation is under control. Several giant billboards were uprooted in Ashtown, Aswase Stadium, Afonkwanta. Swami ran about an Anglo Junction.
metal containers and kiosks serving as shops and places of abode were swept away by the rainstorm. Electricity supply has been cut in most of the affected areas as power cables torn, while trees also fell on about 15 containers and caused distraction to vehicles. He was there when he had a call from his director that some trees have been uprooted at his workplace. He quickly rushed to the scene and saw trees had fallen on cars and destroyed properties. Not so long, NADMO and fire service came around to the rescue. The regional NADMO director, Kwabna Century, debunked allegations of a fire outbreak at the Shantiman Senior High School. We have an update uh, to this particular uh, situation, especially the schools that were affected by this rainstorm coming through. The Ghana Education Trust Fund has decided to re-roof all schools which were affected by the rainstorm late Thursday evening uh, in Kumasi Metropolis in the Ashanti region by close of next week. So this was announced by the Get Fund Administrator Richard Boydu after a working visit to those affected schools to assess the extent of damage. Uh, this afternoon, the administrator was also accompanied by the mayor of Kumasi, Honorable Osea Sibe MG, regional NADMO coordinator, Kobana Century, and staff of NADMO. So the affected schools we're talking about here include T.I. Amadea, Kumasi Girls and St. Louis Training College, Kunedu Iadom Basic School, Ampame Basic School, Abrotia Basic School and Asantiman Senior High School as well. So that's the situation now. Uh, the good news coming through from the Ghana Education Trust Fund. Still on rainstorms, about 45 houses have been destroyed by a rainstorm at Sokode Ando in the whole municipality of the Volta region, while over 150 people have been rendered homeless. Church buildings and schools were not spared. A report by Robert Abilba. Roofs of several homes, churches and a classroom block were ripped off by the rainstorm. Property worth thousands of cities were destroyed. The extent of damage was enormous with education material recently donated, all washed Rest away move. by the rains. Victims are now putting up with families and friends. The victims say NADMO is yet to intervene and support them. The member of parliament for who? Benjamin Kodo and a team visited the victims to console them and presented 10 bundles of roofing sheets. Hello there, my name is Miriam Osei Adjaman. Let's do some entertainment news tonight. Now, award winning Jamaican reggae and dancehall artist Christopher Martin has arrived in Ghana ahead of the Ghana Jamaica Music Culture Fest. Speaking to Naftali Bar on his arrival, Christopher describes Ghana as his second home. He looks forward to collaborating with some Ghanaian artists. Credited with songs such as Cheetah's Prayer, Me Friend Him, Sweet Sweet Love, among others, Christopher Martin has worked with a number of top reggae dancehall producers worldwide. As, as I come to my bridge and I tell me, said, uh, you know what I mean, it's, it's my second home, you know? Yeah. They say, welcome home, so I'm home, so I'm happy to be yes, home. Yes. Yeah, man. The pushback composer touched down on Thursday afternoon and was received by some friends and organizers of the Ghana Jamaica Music Culture Fest. You know, I just love to sing, I love to perform, and um, they show me a lot of love on, on, on like the different social media networks, on the Instagram, on the Facebook, on the Twitter. So, you know, I'm, I, they got me very excited. I'm very happy to be here today in Accra. So, looking forward to tomorrow night, man. Big deal business, you know? The reggae dancehall artist will perform in Ghana for the first time at a concert slated for Saturday, April 6. Aside the concert, Christopher will also take the opportunity to work on some collaborations with Ghanaian artists. Vibes, you know what I mean, and see what can work out, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, music is the start of life, you understand? So once, once, once we can make good music, we're about it, mm. definitely. Have you studied the system? Do you know any of the Ghanaian artists you would love to do something with? No, as I was telling homeboy, you know, it, it, it's just whoever we can make good music with, you understand? At the end of the day, it's not about names or, or about exactly. what's popping, you know what I mean? Once we can make positive, great music together, I'm about it. He will be sharing the stage with some great homegrown talents like Efriye of Wuta fame, Josh Black, 
episode and a host of others. And definitely, man, we're gonna sing all the songs. Like, oh Lord, don't let me cheat on my girlfriend. We're singing all the songs. If you can't love me now, don't love me late. Yeah, that's big deal. I'm a friend, I'm a big deal. We're singing everyone, man. Trust me, yeah, man. Good vibes, man. Not for oh, oh, hey, hey, it's not the first, not the last. So, so much pretty girl I pass. And holding out to such a... And of course, he was on the 3FM driver, Giovanni, later on, well, earlier on in the day. You can always go onto our Facebook page, 3FM 92.7, to catch that interview again. Now, popular comic actor, John Okafo, also known as Mr. Ibu, has debanged rumors making rounds that he is currently down with a stroke. He says, Nadia Papa, get stroke. In his own words, says, Naso I heal, I am hale and hearty. I have been receiving calls from across the world since today. I don't know who is spreading these false, this false news about me. I don't know, uh, I don't know what they're saying. Nadia Papa gets stroke, he repeats. The news broke out today that the comic, the popular comic actor was hit by a mysterious stroke shortly after he returned from a recent trip to Wari. Oh, so now you know he is not sick, he's up and going, and who knows, may, this just may be a stunt to, you know, launch another movie, <laughs> as Nollywood would have it. Alfred, what do you think? Well, I mean, these <coughs> days you don't know what to believe. <laughs> yeah. Because some things come up and mm -hmm. apparently it's just some mm -hmm. kind of a stunt or some PR or something. So You uh, never know. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. You yeah. never know. Are you a big <laughs> fan of Christopher Martin? Yeah, I love that song. Yeah. If you don't love me now, don't love me later. Oh, okay. I, mean, I thought you loved the uh, Cheetah's anthem instead. No, no, Don't no, ask no. why. I mean, you know, these days, yeah, little right. beginnings. <laughs> <laughs> love us while we are now. Don't love us when we are there. Yeah. That's it for News 360. Thanks so much for your time. I am Portia Gabo. My name is Alfred Akansi. <laughs>